Welcome to Lord of Life. Welcome to the celebration of life for Ruth Heron. I'd like you to know that the family is very grateful for your presence here today. And if you notice on the back page of the worship bulletin, on the very last line, there is a website. And the family would really appreciate it since there won't be a time of reception after the service. If you could go to that website and write down your memories, read other people's memories about Ruth, but add to her story for Beth and for Mark to be able to read. Uh, That is my request of you this day. We'll continue with our special music. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Ruth, and to give thanks for her and to commend her to our merciful Redeemer and to comfort one another in our grief. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though his body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so saith the Spirit, for they rest for their labors. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Ruth and grant her an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of the saints. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from Ecclesiastes, beginning at the third chapter and the first verse. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Holy wisdom, holy words. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel for this day is found in the 14th chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Ruth Beatrice Heron was born September 1st, 1934, in Spokane, Washington. She died the 4th of May, 2021, in Surprise, Arizona. Ruth was a lady who wore many hats, literally and figuratively. She was a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mother, a friend, a churchgoer. For the other hats, it was always such a treat to see how she and Billy Ray would be dressed for church as they always matched. She had a hat and he in his colorful jacket and tie. 
They both love dressing up for church. When I first met Ruth, she was having a procedure done at St. Joseph's Hospital in Phoenix. She was having a shunt put in to help fluid not build up on her brain. I arrived at the hospital before the 6 a.m. surgery to have a prayer with her. She was so overwhelmed and grateful that I would be there to pray with her before this procedure. I think that's when she first started praying for me, and I'm pretty sure she never stopped. You know what she always said to me with her eyes staring directly into mine? I love you, honey, only with her accent. I knew she meant it, too. Ruth had lots and lots of love to give. To say Ruth's faith was strong is an understatement. Her faith literally carried her, picked her right up, held her firmly during the hard times in her life. She and the Lord walked a long path together. Like the poem, Footsteps in the Sand, sometimes the Lord carried her. In the last few years, she was a devoted wife and caregiver to Billy Ray. His care consumed her, much to the detriment of her own health. How long had she had this cancer that then took her life? We can't be sure, but it was very advanced when they discovered it. She wouldn't have wanted to change anything, however. Caring for Billy Ray was what she was meant to do. She took a vow, and she stuck to it. She couldn't often come to Bible study in those days because it was hard to leave Billy Ray home alone. I would come to the house, and we would have wonderful conversations about faith. Mostly, I would listen. <laughs> she had her favorite Bible stories and times when she was young and the stories she'd heard in Sunday school. I can't help but think she might have enjoyed knowing that I'm going to teach a class this coming fall on the book of Revelation. I know she'd probably want to be there. I think I'll save her a seat. Gone but not forgotten. As her daughter Beth wrote in the beautiful obituary, Ruth has returned to her heavenly home. As I look at all these hymns that Beth took great care in choosing and selecting for Ruth, they all speak of Ruth's great faith. Nearer my God to thee, blessed assurance, Ruth lived by that. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness, and he leadeth me, ending with joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Just the titles of those songs are a, a, are a picture of Ruth's amazing faith and her amazing commitment to God and her church. Days before she died, I happened to be there when her daughter Beth called, and Beth was reading scripture to Ruth over the phone. It brought such peace and serenity to Ruth. You could just see her relaxing after hearing the words that Beth would read. Even though she was very uncomfortable, I don't think her pain was ever really under control most of those last days, unfortunately. And the words of John 14, where Jesus tells us, first of all, not to be afraid, but then that he's going to prepare a place for us, a place for us. That's exactly what I imagine Ruth has been thinking of for most of her life, going to prepare a place for her, Jesus, her rock, her salvation, preparing for her eventual homecoming at peace, blissful, surrounded by all that heaven holds in store. Gracious God, we thank you for giving Ruth to us to know and to love. We love her still. God bless you. Amen.
Let us proclaim our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our response today to the prayers of the people is hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
after the commendation, we'll join together in singing the doxology. While the doxology is being sung, Pastor Pam and myself will follow the ashes out of the sanctuary. You're invited to remain and listen to the postlude. Again, songs picked especially uh, for Ruth. Let us commend Ruth Beatrice Heron to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant Ruth. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen.
We continue with the committal service for Ruth Heron. Grace and peace from our Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and powerful, by the death and burial of Jesus your anointed, you have destroyed the power of death and made holy the resting place of all your people. Keep our sister Ruth, whose ashes we now lay to rest in the company of all your saints. And at the last, O God, raise her up to share with all the faithful the endless joy and peace won through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We read from the letter of 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishably, and we will all be changed. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Ensure in certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our sister Ruth Heron. We commit her ashes to this final resting place, ash to ash, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord's face shine on her with grace and mercy, and the Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen and amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all.